So the first thing that I want to address is this issue of Gnosticism, where he says that eternal security, or one saved, always saved, is a Gnostic teaching. So it's one of the early heresies that the church fathers or early Christians had to deal with. Okay. Now there's a multitude of problems with this, but the first thing is bearing in mind that this guy here, he's already debunked his own argument. We already saw earlier in this video that he said, we don't follow the church fathers, you know, we, we go to the Bible. Well, okay, well, I don't really see why it's an argument then, but there you go. So the second problem is that they, they always try and make these early Christians as if they're super close to source, like really close to the truth. But we can even open the Bible and see that Jesus was dealing with heretics like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and this, that and the other. Paul was warning us against heretics. The book of Revelation was warning us against the Nicolaitans and all these things. So if there were all these heretics in the time of the Bible and there are all these heretics now, and there have been all of these heretics for hundreds of years, like what is remarkably pure about the second or third century? It, it's just bizarre. And the thing is, most of what we have of what early Christians wrote has been preserved by the Roman Catholic Church, or maybe the Eastern Orthodox Church. Now, some of, some of the early church folk were heretics and believed in weird teachings themselves. They weren't necessarily all consistent amongst each other what they even believed and if something is rejected by most christians such as eternal security or faith alone or, or whatever it might be then why would the catholic church preserve the writings of people who proclaimed that well they wouldn't so this idea that we need to rummage through history until we find something somewhere of somebody saying something that we want them to say well you know a lot of historical records have been lost paper perishes okay and Who's who are the church, who are the Roman Catholic or the Eastern Orthodox Church is going to preserve? Are they going to preserve people that preached against the doctrines they believe, or are they going to pre preserve the writings of people who are in favour of what they actually believed? There's a lot more that I could say about that, really, but I'm not I'm not going to delve into it because it'll just get too off topic. So, uh, in this video, he uh, Gnosticism in the Church today. He does an interview with this guy called Chip Lutic, and they, these two are like birds of a feather flock together, basically. So he holds up this book, Against Heresies, uh, written by Irena Irenaeus, I believe. So that's one of the books that he's uh, trying to argue, and he is pointing to a lot of modern church beliefs and saying that these are Gnostic teachings, this, that, and the other. And about an hour into the video, well, an hour and eight minutes in, this is where they start talking about one saved, always saved, and how that's a Gnostic teaching. Um, and it's the kind of thing that Irenaeus warned against. So just have a look for a couple of minutes of this clip of these two talking about this issue, and then we'll deal with it. Let's touch on the issue of once saved, always saved, and how this uh, relates to Gnosticism. Once saved, always saved is a Gnostic teaching. It is a Gnostic heretical teaching during the Protestant Reformation, specifically by Luther, whether he was cognizant of that or trying to do that or not. Um, it is far removed from the historical faith, and it was consistently uh, refuted by all the early Christians. Now, I, I know people out there right now are wanting to just, you know, interject and say, that's that's not true. There, there, there were people that believed this. Uh, you know, in, in the first, in the first at least couple hundred years, was there anybody no. who believed so, yeah. in eternal security or who believed all in one side or the heretics, all the Gnostic heretics? <laughs> yeah. Now, guys, that that should say something. The only ones who believed in eternal security were the Gnostics. Were the ones who who like who like Chip just said uh, that were. What, what did he say about the one guy that he was a, a child of Satan? Uh, Polycarp was said of Marcion, Marcion. He's the firstborn of Satan. Firstborn of Satan. So, so the the only ones that held to once saved, always saved, eternal security, were the one were the were the same ones that he was calling these type of names to. This was considered it's, a huge yeah. heresy. Isn't this serpentine doctrine? Isn't this straight from the garden? That's right. You will not surely die. So, okay, so. Yeah, so once saved, always saved, or sin as inconsequential. Like I mentioned earlier, First John, John says, if we say that we are without sin, 
we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So the, the Gnostics, th because of their spirit matter dualism, they said, whatever we do in our bodies doesn't matter. And so in effect, there's no sin because our bodies are evil. This world is evil. So there's no point in calling anything sin. All Everything physical is, is bad and evil. And the wow. spirit is only good. Chip, tell, tell, tell me why this sounds so familiar to me. I, I don't know. Maybe because you hear it all over the place all the time. Well, so I mean, so, so, so what doctrine today may, is basically just a mirror copy of this or just a derivative of this? All right. Well, let me let me just read some of the quotes here and you'll get an idea. OK, so Irenaeus says of the Gnostics, but as to themselves, they hold that they shall be entirely and undoubtedly saved, not by means of conduct, but because they are spiritual by nature. Hmm. So the Gnostics are saying it's not about how you live. That's not what matters. It's about that you've received this special knowledge. So there's a few problems going on here, folks. Now, in the whole, in the entirety of the video, a lot of the stuff that they say about the Gnostics is true. Weird beliefs that they had about uh, teachings about demiurge stuff and um, divine, the way that they defied the flesh and the spirit. And then they, therefore they say that we can do whatever we want. We can go out and sin and it, and it, and it won't affect us. Okay. But there's also, there's a lot of things that they leave out though, because the one bit of this book he's provided, he he's very selectively quote mind. And we are going to look at that in a bit, but they have just automatically asserted that Polycarp uh, called Marcion like a, a servant of Satan or whatever he said, on account of one saved, always saved. But the thing is, all you have to do is just read the book against heresies and see what Marcion was actually exposed for, because you, you can read where uh, Polycarp is quoted as saying that about Marcion, and see whether it has anything to do with one saved, always saved or not. And so what a lot of what they're saying here, they're just making accusations without really backing it up. And then they're just counting on the fact that you're not going to read it. Okay. Or, or that you're just, you're going to go in with that already planted in your mind. And so what they're doing essentially is that they're picking up on this belief that the Gnostics had, that they could pretty much do anything that they want, including, you know, a lot of wicked stuff. And then just by default, they apply that to one saved, always saved. Of course, you know, all the stuff that we've been looking at with the chastisement of believers, you know, that, that doesn't seem to make it in here, folks, with, with these guys. But what we're going to do is we're just going to go to source. Okay, we're going to look at against heresies. We're going to look at what Irenaeus actually said about Marcion and said about the Gnostics. And then we'll see if one saved, always saved really was this big heresy that, that made Marcion, a, 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 you know, a child of Satan. So we're looking at this book um, Against Heresies by Irenaeus, and we're just going to look at what Irenaeus had to say about Marcion and then what he actually asserted was not Gnostic teaching. And we'll show you how that differs from free grace and one saved, always saved. So in book one, chapter 27, this is probably the first mention of where he, he really brings up um, Marcion. So he explains that uh, Serdo was the one who taught him, and Serdo taught that God proclaimed by the law and the prophets was not the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's basically blaspheming the son here, and blaspheming the father by saying that God is not the father of, of Christ. And then uh, Marcion developed this doctrine, that, that's basically the claim there. He then goes on to say, to explain what, what their version of salvation is, or what Marcion's uh, salvation doctrine was, that salvation will be the attainment only of those souls which had learned his doctrine, while the body, as having been taken from the earth, is incapable of sharing in salvation. In addition, he then goes on to say uh, something really we weird, basically. This is Marcion preached something super bizarre that Cain and like the Sodomites and the Egyptians and others like them they're all fine all the nations who walked in all sorts of abominations they were all saved on so on is descending into Hades and they they were welcomed into the kingdom 
but the but then uh, the serpent it goes on to say the serpent which was in Marcion declared that Abel, Enoch, Noah, and all those other righteous men who who sprang sprang from the patriarch Abraham, with all the prophets and those who were pleasing to God, did not partake in salvation. So, uh, assuming that everything Irenaeus is accusing Marcion of is correct here, Marcion went round saying that all the wicked people in the Bible made it to heaven, and all the good people in the Bible didn't essentially. Well, that's not what one saved always saved believes. That's not what free grace believes at all. That's got nothing to do with what we believe. It's not even close to anything that we believe. And so you can start to see just how we're completely strawmanned in his video by trying to compare us to this guy. And we'll see a bit more of this come about later, but this, this is crucial here where they say that they have to learn this doctrine to be to be saved their special doctrine it's not that well we go to the bible we look what jesus said and that's how we base our salvation on it's all this super secret doctrine that they think that only people who get this special knowledge will attain salvation again not what one saved always saved believes not what free grace believes because we just show you from the bible there's nothing secret about the knowledge that, that we attain okay so that's going to come about later and this secret knowledge thing it probably has more to do with buddhism than it does to have with christianity and furthermore, another weird teaching of Marcion, again, assuming that everything Irenaeus was saying about him is true, preached against marriage, setting aside the original creation of God and indirectly blaming God who made them male or female for the propagation of the human race. So again, it's this weird idea that God somehow buggered up creation and made a big mistake when, when he made it or, or something like that. Again, super weird teaching. Never, ever met a free grace OSAS person who believes this in my entire life. Here's another one, a certain man named Tertian who, like Marcion, declared that marriage was nothing else than corruption and fornication. So this is something that God says is good, God says it's it's fine, it's allowed, they make it corruption and fornication. Well that's again not what the Bible says at all, that's complete opposite to what the Bible says. And he goes on to say, but the, this guy Tertian denies Adam's salvation, but that's an opinion entirely to himself. So. Irenaeus seems to be not outright saying it, but hinting that Adam was actually saved, which is funny because uh, Chip was just giving us all that about the serpent in the garden, a garden saying to Eve, you shall not surely die, which again has nothing to do with Osas because they weren't saved in the conventional sense before the fall. So there you have it, folks. And then here's another one where Irenaeus points out his two gods, because what, what essentially is going on here is Marcion is trying to divide the Godhead into multiple gods. Uh, because bearing in mind we've already seen him blaspheme the son and blaspheme the father so this is the weird teaching that they had and then here's another one where again they're blaspheming god essentially uh, you know trying to separate the father from the son and trying to imply that the world was created de defective or ignorant no you know the bible says that god made the earth and he saw that it was good so again it's this blaspheming crea uh, god of creation basically Here's another one, nor is there a second god as Marcion has imagined. So again, this is the heresy that's been exposed here. Not one saved, always saved. He's exposing the heresy of two gods. That's the heresy being exposed. Uh, this is another highlighted paragraph about Marcion's predecessor and then Marcion and the just mentioning their connection to other bishops and that they once taught in secret, but then they were denounced for corrupt teaching. So it's not really giving us a heresy. It's just saying that they were exposed essentially. Um, here's another one where Marcion was denying that the world was made by Jesus. And then uh, Irenaeus goes on to explain that according, according to certain of the Gnostics, this world was made by angels and not by the word of God. Also important to point out the word certain of there, because um, it's important to understand that the, the Gnostics weren't unanimous on doctrine there were different points of view and lots of different heresies were lumped into what's called gnosticism so you can't really say the gnostics believe this or the gnostic there were different kinds of gnostic teachings but this is an issue of denying jesus deity nothing to do with one saved always saved here's another one he's accusing marcion of mutilating the gospels the gospel of luke particularly where they're trying to separate jesus from Christ. So there's Jesus and then there's Christ is trying to make a distinction between those two so that it was Jesus who suffered but not the Christ, which is the weirdest teaching I've ever heard. But nothing to do with one saved, always saved, funnily enough. Here's another highlighted bit of Marcion uh, rejecting the gospel and uh, re rejects John's gospel, rejects the Lord's promise that he would send the uh, Holy Spirit. So again, nothing to do with Osas. He's just 
pl- flat out rejecting what the Bible says. That's what's been exposed here. Um, here's another one where he's again accusing Marcion of mutilating the scriptures by not acknowledging some of the books in, in the Bible, essentially. And uh, some of his followers are blaspheming the creator by making God the the creator of evil or the author of evil, which I, I know some Calvinists do believe it's not what uh, Free Grace believes, though. Here's another uh, refutation about the Marcionites that they allege that Paul alone knew the truth and that he had some sort of mysterious knowledge of revelation that nobody else had. Again, nothing to do with Osas. Here's another uh, highlighted paragraph. Again, nothing to see here, folks. He's accusing Marcion of rejecting certain parts of Luke, saying that some bits are right and some of it are wrong. So Marcion's followers are just picking and choosing which parts of the Gospels they accept. So again, it's rejecting what the Bible says, but nothing to do with Osas. Again, here's another one where there's nothing new to see. He's trying to divide God into like two gods, that there's like a good God and a a bad god or something again more weird teaching that's got nothing to do with osas further qualifies that a few pages later by they saying that the marcionites have demonstrated that they have invented a god they don't follow the god of the bible here's another one and i've changed the color of the text here that i've highlighted just to draw attention to something is that irenaeus references a book written by justin against marcion i was unable to find that book i don't think it's a surviving work we've only got fragments of it and so this bit in Irenaeus's writing is really the only evidence of, of what Justin wrote about Marcion, as far as I know. Uh, but it, it, he's essentially, Justin accused Marcion of not believing the Lord, that even if the Lord had come to him and announced, look, I am your framer, your maker, your nourisher, I am the only begotten God, he, he would have rejected it if the Lord himself had personally stood in front of him and, and said it. Again, nothing to do with Osas, but that's what's being accused there. Another mention of Marcion, and again, it just rejecting God as the maker of heaven and earth, nothing that we haven't already seen in what we've looked at. Here's another one where he's referencing Marcion's super bizarre teachings, like they try to exclude Abraham from salvation. Again, all the bad guys in the Bible were saved. All the good guys were unsaved. Again, we've already seen that heresy exposed earlier by Irenaeus, but nothing to do with Osas. And again, nothing that we haven't already seen. Marcion, uh, Marcionites trying to suggest that God is the author of sin because he blinded Pharaoh's heart. Again, something that uh, once saved, always saved us don't believe. Maybe some Calvinists believe it, but free grace don't. Here's the topic title of another refutation where he's trying to deal with the issue that the Marcionites thought that God like directed the Hebrews to deliberately spoil the Egyptians. Again, presumably something to do with God commanding sin or evil. That's what he's exposing. Yet another ma- mention of Marcion with the two gods, nothing that we haven't seen before. Here's another super bizarre teaching where they're maintaining that the prophets were from another god, not from the god of the Bible. Again, super weird teaching that has nothing to do with Osas. Here's another one, again, blaspheming the creator, so nothing to do with Osas. And then the last bit that I've saved to last for dealing with Marcion specifically is that uh, here Irenaeus is commending uh, Polycarp uh, for exposing the, the, some of the heretical stuff that Marcion was uh, preaching and so forth. And uh, this is where he mentions Polycarp himself replied to Marcion, do you know me? I do know you, the firstborn of Satan. So that that's the bit where Marcion was called the firstborn of Satan by Polycarp. And I've saved that bit to last because that's what Adam and Chip were, were mentioning there when they're trying to relate one saved, always saved with all of Marcionic heresies that this somehow makes the uh, Marcy on the, the firstborn of Satan for preaching one saved, always saved. But the thing is, though, folks, these two guys didn't present any of this to you. He's just held up the front cover of this book. He's probably counting on the fact that most of their viewers won't ever actually read it because, you know, a lot of Christians have a hard enough time reading the Bible, let alone reading pages and pages and pages of church father stuff. And if there is anybody that does happen to read it, he's already put on their minds that this was the heresy that was being taught. But you've just been with me, folks. We've just looked through all of these different bits where Irenaeus is mentioning Marcion and the the heresies that he's exposing. One saved, always saved hasn't come up. I mean, what, what were the heresies that Irenaeus has exposed? Well, we saw it, folks, that the father of Jesus Christ was not the God proclaimed by the Old Testament laws. If there's like a different God in, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, or that salvation is only attained by soul, uh, souls who learned his secret doctrine, 
or that wicked people in the Bible made it into the kingdom, whereas righteous people did not, or that God is the author of sin, or that marriage is corruption and fornication, or that Adam was not saved, or that God's creation was defective, or it was made by angels and not by the word of God, or that there is a second God or a division of the Godhead, or that Jesus was not the Christ, or that the Bible had mistakes in it. These are the the heresies that were exposed by Irenaeus. We've just gone to it. We've gone to source. We've look at, looked at these different mentions of Marcion. That's what's been exposed. It's got nothing whatsoever to do with one saved, always saved. Yet what do we see dumb and dumber saying in their stupid video? One saved, always saved is the Gnostic teaching. <laughs> or, you know, see guys, Polycarp called Marcion the firstborn of Satan for believing in one saved, always saved. It's just, they're talking rubbish. There's no evidence of this. They're just making stuff up. It's false accusation, folks. So um, there's one more thing to address, and, and this would probably be the, the, the ace up their sleeve, their, their trump card, if you will. And this is uh, against Harris's book, 1 Chapter 6, and this is where he quote mined from in, in that clip that we looked at earlier. So uh, the stuff that Irenaeus says about uh, here is more about the Gnostics generally, rather than Marcion specifically so you see when when he quote mined this he applied it to marcion but the, but the thing is the the gnostics weren't all unanimous about what they believed okay you know like, like some denominations in christianity today you talk to two people from the same group if you like and you will get two completely different opinions so uh you know th this doesn't necessarily all apply to marcion it's just a very generalistic thing about uh you know Gnostics generally. So this is what we're going to look at. So we're just going to take it through carefully and we're just going to see, again, what is Irenaeus actually exposing about these people? And yeah, there might be some similarities to, to One Saved, Always Saved. That doesn't make Osas wrong, though, at the end of the day. And actually, we're going to see some similarities with conditional security here, funnily enough, folks. So first of all, and, and I never highlighted this, and I should have done really, but look, look how he introduces the chapter. So, so who are what? What is it about these heretics? What's the first thing that Irenaeus has to say about these heretics right here? Well, they're saying that good works are needless for them themselves, though necessary to others. Okay, so so watch that right there, folks. Necessary to others. Okay, now is that what free grace believes? No, okay. It, good works are not necessary for salvation to anybody, okay. So it's not well. Well, we're saved by uh, faith without works, but you know you have to be saved with the works. Well, immediately there, folks, we've started with a works-based salvation, then, okay, because the same rules should apply to everybody. So we've already got a problem. They did believe in a work salvation of sorts, okay. So you know, again, that that didn't make it into the quote mine, obviously. So what what they essentially do is the these heretics they they divide everything that's material or everything that is in, into three categories, okay. So there's what the first hand, the, the left hand thing. It looks as if he's saying immaterial, so that that which is non living, uh, you know, stone water that kind of thing and then right hand you've got the animal substance okay and and i guess the closest thing in our christian vernacular is things that are fleshly okay but then these heretics themselves they think they are of a of a spiritual substance and it's by means of perfect knowledge okay which irenaeus will explain if, if you read the whole chapter now most of us those of us who haven't received perfect knowledge were kind of uh, a mixture of we've got an, an aspect of spiritual substance okay which has been sent forth the uh, for this end which i assume he means in the world being united with that which is animal so spirit substance has united with animal substance and then he goes on to talk about these animal men so you know this is getting super weird really quickly okay so it's, you know it's not difficult to see how weird and heretical this is before we even get on to the, the quote mine stuff about uh, about osas okay so you might wonder well well how do they scripturally justify that well apparently reading matthew 5 and looking at salt and light in the world apparently that's their justification for it okay now look no normal person opens the bible reads that that passage there sees jesus talking about the salt and light in the world you are the salt and light and they think yeah the spiritual substance merging with the animal substance no normal person sees that okay the only person who sees that is some heretical weirdo who thinks that there's some secret knowledge that reveals what salt and light really is okay uh, and believe it or not this same mentality 
it does exist in, in Christianity today where, where people think, well, I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and I know the voice of God. And then they have these super weird teachings based on these very vague Bible passages. You know, they're very ambiguous when it when it's trying to prove what what they think it proves okay so that that essence of it is like so it's not it's not difficult to tell how super weird this is already even if you are in the one saved always saved faith alone camp okay now look what it goes on to say so for the animal substance that had needs of training by means of an outward senses and on this account they the heretics affirm that the world was created as well as that a savior came to the animal substance which was possessed of free will so well conditional security believes in free will they make such a big deal about that don't they and he might secure it for salvation so look here christ died for these animal substance people so again super weird absolutely not from the bible at all it's just it's just completely weird and they affirm that he received the first fruits of those whom he came to save and this is where it gets super weird, folks, as if it's not already weird enough, it gets even weirder. From Akamoth, which is, as far as I understand, I don't know a lot about that, but I think that's a Hebrew name for the Greek goddess Sophia. And that's like a spiritual type god. And then uh, he was invested by the Demiurge, which is like a physical type god, like a craftsman who created the world. But he's material, so he, he's kind of malevolent. He's kind of like a bad god. So it's like this good spiritual Christ sort of invested or merging with this animal Christ. So it's, it's this weird nature. See, we obviously have, we know that Christ is God, but he's God in the flesh. But they've just ta taken some Greek uh, religious philosophy and just made it super weird. Okay, and so we have the animal Christ. So, so it's not difficult to see very quickly. This is extremely heretical and nothing to do with one saved, always saved, or faith alone, and not even remotely like it. But there you go. So uh, there's that there, and then so this is what this is where where it gets to um, in terms of salvation. So anything that's material uh, is incapable of of salvation. There, okay. So they hold further that the consummation of all things, which I assume perhaps means the end of the world, will take place when. All that is spiritual has been formed and perfected by the Lord Jesus Christ. Not quite, no. By Gnosis knowledge, okay? So that's where the term Gnosticism comes from, because it, it all pins around this. And by this they mean spiritual men who have attained to the perfect knowledge of God and being initiated into these mysteries. So what is it about about this? Well, notice the word attained, okay? Well, it's not, well, they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be believe. No, they have attained, okay? Well, what is it when man attains his salvation? It's called works. It's called work salvation. And what have they attained? Well, they think they've attained this perfect knowledge of God, okay? So again, is it, well, you believe on the Lord Jesus? No, it's this special knowledge, you know, a bit like Satan said in the garden, you shall be as like god okay and so it's these these mysteries okay and so there's all this super weird teaching with the material and the the spiritual which has absolutely nothing to do with with the bible at all and notice as well i i, I failed to highlight this but where it says akamoth has initiated into the uh these people into these mysteries so it's like this female kind of holy spirit type of a goddess has initiated them into this secret knowledge okay so again all this weird pagan teaching and there's stuff out there that you can find about like you know mystery babylon and mystery of religion uh, there's a channel called there's a guy called spencer smith he's done some stuff about that about mystery of religion so there there's some quite interesting documentaries you, you can find out a bit more about that because he's done some stuff about the divine feminine i'm not really going to get into it because I, do, I don't know a lot about that so Irenaeus then goes on to explain the heretical doctrines uh, that they believed about these animal men. Okay, so yeah, even Irenaeus is describing their doctrine, having to use weird terms to describe it because it's just so weird. Okay, so animal men, uh, who, those who are not these perfect knowledge people, they've been instructed in animal things. Okay, so such men, watch this, namely, as are established by their works and by a mere faith so look at that there folks the heretics here believed that that those of you who fit in the animal men category those of you that haven't attained this secret knowledge you need works okay and your faith you know it's a mere faith you know that word just bringing down faith there the word mere so you know you need works in this mere faith okay because you have not 
got the perfect knowledge. Now, you see, if you get that perfect knowledge, you don't need these works and this mere faith. OK, so they're, they're bringing down faith. So does it sound like these people were lifting up faith, like faith alone, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Probably not. No, because they actually lifted up their secret knowledge. That's what they that's what they lifted up. So, again, this has got nothing to do with faith alone or OSAS, obviously. And again, it's this one rule for you and another rule for me. Well, guess what? Free grace rejects that. OK, so we of the church also were, were filed under the category of these animal men. OK, so uh, they maintain these heretics maintain that good works are necessary for us animal men. Uh, because if it what if we didn't have the works, it would then be impossible that we should be saved. So it, they believed in a works based salvation somewhere. OK, now you might think that's a bit of a red herring because they're not applying it to themselves. Um, this does have a similarity where some people who claim to kind of believe in faith alone uh, are in this dispensational Ruktard, Rukmanite type stuff where they believe that Jews in the Old Testament were saved by works, but were saved by faith in the New Testament. Well, guess what, heretics? It's always been a faith, Old and New Testament. So, you know, that even they mix a little bit of works in there. Well, that's exactly what they're doing. There's still work salvation in there somewhere. OK, but again, you know, Chip Lutic, EPUC on apologetics, they wouldn't, you know, they, they'd leave that bit of detail out because it's, you know, it's not important, OK, for what they're talking about. And so this is the bit then that Chip Lutic quote mind, OK, but as, as to themselves, they hold that they shall be entirely and undoubtedly saved, not by means of conduct, but because they are spiritual by nature. Now, Chip obviously quote mind that. So then he's making it out as if Irenaeus is obviously preaching that, you know, everybody that is a true Christian would actually believe that salvation is, is by conduct. OK, but first of all, well, what Irenaeus believed doesn't even matter. It's what the Bible says at the end of the day. And the Bible says we're saved by grace through faith and not of works. Deal with it. But the thing is, what with what Irenaeus is talking about here, does Irenaeus even say here that we need to be saved by works or according to our conduct? That's not even what he says. He's just describing what these heretics believed, okay, and that they were exempt from conduct because works are for the animal men. So the animal men need to walk in all of this righteousness and, and what on. We don't because, you know, we're these spiritual people, okay, and spiritual by nature. Well, are they spiritual by nature because they've been born again, because they've believed on the Lord? Well, apparently not because it's it's all this stuff to do with this secret knowledge and this Akamoth stuff, okay. These are not people who believe on the Christ, right so you know it, it's just a complete straw man it's a complete red herring to bring this up uh, as if Irenaeus is saying that you know we must be saved by works and all these heretics were preaching faith alone and one saved always saved they weren't it's as simple as that and when he says not by means of conduct it, the, the point that Irenaeus actually will go on to explain is that they just continued sinning okay we're, you know without a care in the world that we'll, we'll get onto that as we progress and so then because of this weird division that they make between uh, material substance and spiritual substance. So material substance cannot partake of salvation. It's incapable of receiving it. So uh, it is impossible that spiritual substance, by which they mean themselves, uh, should ever come under the power of corruption, what, whatever the sorts of actions in which they indulge. So again, they, they, well, Chip didn't actually quote mine that, but you know, that they're, they're looking at that thinking, ah, see, there it is. Okay. But First of all, this is not directly comparable to what faith alone and one saved always saved believes. You see, the Bible's very clear. If I sin, it's no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells in me, that is my flesh. OK, the spirit itself is the born again aspect that, that cannot sin. OK, that's what faith alone actually believes, because that's what the Bible says. OK, but at the moment, while ever we're on this earth, the flesh and the spirit haven't separated. OK, so the flesh itself is still corrupt. It's still being corrupt. And you can corrupt it all the more by way of sin. OK, so it's got again, it's got nothing to do with what these people believe. And Irenaeus is just pointing out what they believe. He's just explaining their doctrine. OK, this, this is not even necessarily telling us exactly what Irenaeus himself would proclaim. So uh, there's this example of gold where you submerge it in filth uh, and it comes back out and it's, it's still gold. It's not it's not affected by the, the filth there. Uh, obviously, other materials, that that's not so. So then uh, uh, it also it comes to pass that the most perfect among them, so those that have this secret knowledge, they addict themselves without fear 
to all of these forbidden deeds, which the scripture assures us those uh, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So you've, you've got Galatians there, and obviously Corinthians says something similar as well. So, but but the point here, right, the point here is that, yes, okay, so the Bible says that those who do such things shall not inherit, but then it also goes on to explain that you have been delivered from those things. However, Paul still needs to stress to the Corinthians or to the Galatians not to go out and do these things, okay? Because, you know, we, we should reckon ourselves dead to sin, as Paul explains. Uh, but here, the, what the problem is with these people is that they literally thought, well, let's just go out and sin. And here, they're even making a point about doing it. You know, they eat meat, sacrifice to idols. Uh, they go to these heathen festivals and, and so on and so on. And so they deliberately, knowingly, willingly and unrepentantly participate in all of these uh wicked deeds okay and they haven't got any uh you know problem with doing that okay it goes on to say that you know they defile themselves with carnal stuff and some of them uh have this thing about defiling women okay well this is obviously if this is the same thing that marcion also believed if marcion was part of this same group well this is very hypocritical and we've just seen all that stuff about where uh, they, you know, believe marriage was fornication and all of that weird stuff. So again, it's this one rule for you guys and another rule for us. Okay. So the problem with these men is that they thought that sin didn't matter. Okay. As long as you have this perfect knowledge, you can go out and sin entirely as much as you want. And so this is, this is really feeding the flesh. Okay. And so they're obviously not very spiritual at all they literally go out and do what they want. And so these are not people who believe that they're sinners in need of a saviour, okay? These are people who are just, you know, let's go out and do, you know, do as thou wilt, essentially. So this is simply not what free grace believes. Um, yes, we do believe that a man is still saved, even if he has sin, but the chastisement of believers does deal with that issue if a believer sins. We don't go around saying it's okay to sin, but that's constantly what we get accused of, by wicked people like Epiusi and Apologetics and Chip Lutic, okay. And then it goes on to say in point four, committing many other abominations and impieties, they run us down, and, and us being those who fear of God and guard against sinning, even in thought and, um, or word. And obviously, again, these, you know, Epiusi and Chip, they, they think they're those guys, okay. So, you know, we're running them down, even though we've read all that and it's really got nothing to do with free grace at all, okay. And by the way, you know, when I'm running Epiusi on apologetics down, I'm not running him down for guarding against sin, okay? I'm running him down for being a false prophet, okay? There is a world of difference. So, uh, you know, they're, they're criticising those of us who actually fear God is what Irenaeus is claiming here. They highly exalt themselves, so, you know, it's patting themselves on the back. Well, free great, we don't pat ourselves on the back. We believe we're saved according to what Jesus did. People who believe in work salvation, well, they're highly exalting themselves because they have the goal to think that their works are going to get them into heaven, okay? We don't highly exalt ourselves. If we did highly exalt ourselves, we wouldn't need faith alone, okay? And they claim to be perfect in the elect seed, uh, for they declare, and now watch this, watch this, that we, so us animal people that need the works and the faith to be saved, we simply receive grace for use, wherefore also it will again be taken away from us. So we receive grace, but it will be taken from us. Sounds a little bit like lose your salvation language, doesn't it, folks? Just a little bit. Again, that wouldn't make it into Chip's conversation with Adam, would it? Because, you know, that, that wouldn't fit their narrative, would it, folks? Uh, so, But they themselves, they have grace as their own special possession, okay, because of their secret knowledge. Again, nothing to do with OSAS. This has descended above by means of an unspeakable and indescribable conjunction. Okay, and on this account, more will be given to them. They maintain, therefore, that in every way it is always necessary for them to practice the mystery of conjunction. Okay, so again, this is to compare this to one saved, always saved. It's entirely a straw man. They've completely quote mined it. And they've basically lied about what Irenaeus is actually exposing here. Okay, so, you know, Mr. We need to turn from all our sins to be saved. Well, guess what? You lied about this. So, to hell for you, buddy. And notice again, notice this word, they maintain. It's always necessary for them to practice. So, well, then what happens when they stop practicing, folks? I wonder if they lose their salvation. We'll never know because Irenaeus doesn't say too much about that. But, uh, and then they, uh, again, he talks about this, uh, 
whosoever of this world has intercourse with woman shall not attain the truth because he has act acted under lust. So again, it's this thing of one rule for them, another rule for us, because, you know, he just told us earlier that they defile women. So, you know, it's, it's this hypocritical belief system that they've got going on there. Whereas, so, you know, he tops it off there saying uh, it's not at all necessary for us. So, you know, they're just making two different rules for two different people, essentially. And again, there's that good works. Can you see we, the animal men, we need the good works. But, you know, spiritual people, well, we have our special knowledge, so we're all good. OK, so none of that has anything to do with one saved, always saved. It has to do with one rule for you and another rule for you. And what were the rules? Well, according to the rules for you, work salvation. OK, so, you know, that, that, that's entirely the opposite of what Chip and Adam actually said that this passage is even about. So let's just uh, top that off by quickly comparing what we believe then. So Gnosticism, what, you know, this is assuming that what Irenaeus said was actually true, by the way. Salvation is exclusive to uber spiritual people with a secret or special knowledge. Okay. Or animal men need works and mere faith to maybe attain salvation. Whereas in free grace, as I advocate, we believe that salvation is by grace through faith without works. Chip Luterman, uh, Lutic and Adam from Epiusian Apologetics, they believe that salvation is achieved by grace through faith with works. The Gnostics believe that we who are spiritual can sin as much as we like and we shall not be corrupted. But you animal men, you need works and faith, so you better not be walking in sin. Now, they didn't, even Ace didn't directly mention whether salvation can or cannot be lost. But, you know, he did mention stuff about uh, grace could be taken away from you, things like that. Uh, although sin doesn't cause it to be lost, for the, at least for the super spiritual people, there is no mention as to whether one can lose or, or depart from the secret knowledge. But there was a, a maintenance like sentence in there. Well, free grace teachers all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is, present tense, not a just man upon the earth who does good and sins not. If we sin, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. In other words, Jesus doesn't have to die all over again, but we can expect a fearful looking for judgment. And of course, that's Hebrews 10.26 quoted correctly. As for Chip, Lutic and Adam, well, they believe Jesus' blood only covers your past sins. Going forward, you must obey to do no more sins. Otherwise, Jesus' sacrifice stops being effective and we can lose our salvation. And that's Hebrews 10.26 quoted incorrectly. OK. And I'm going to go out on a limb here, folks, that actually, based on the stuff that Irenaeus has said about these people from what we've read, they have way, these Gnostics have way more in common with Chip, Lutic and Adam than they have with me or anybody that believes in free grace. And let me qualify that. You see, the Gnostics had this one rule for me and another rule for thee. Will you be saved by works and faith? I'll be saved by special knowledge. That's what they believe. Well, free grace, we believe that God is not a respecter of persons. The same rule of salvation applies to everybody. These two guys need saving in exactly the same way as I need saving. It's just some will accept it and some won't. But what, what do they say that you must do? Well, they say you must obey your way to heaven. Okay. They have a works based, obedience based salvation. But the thief on the cross was given a special exemption, apparently. We, uh, they lied about what Hebrews 10 26 really means. They took it completely out of context to teach something far different from what the chapter actually teaches. They lied about what, uh, about Osas being a Gnostic teaching that Irenaeus exposed. They lied about Polycarp calling Marcy on the firstborn of Satan specifically for preaching one saved, always saved. Lies, lies, and lies. So these men want to go around telling you how you must work your way to heaven and you will lose your salvation if you don't obey your way to the bitter end. It's okay for them to bear false witness though. And already, folks, I can see in my mind, I, I can picture it. If, if they ever watch this video, I can picture the one million and one excuses that they have about why they're not really lying and I'm misrepresenting them and they are obeying and they never lie because they've turned from all their sins. I can just, I can hear all the excuses as to why they're not actually lying. And I can just imagine all of their sycophants who are even dumber than they are to listen to them, giving them excuses and just constantly rejecting the truth. And then you point all this stuff out to them, like, well, you still need to obey your way to heaven. Like, even when you've just proven them wrong and proven that they're not saved by their own standards. And it's tragic. And it would be utterly hilarious uh, how moronic the whole thing is if it wasn't for the fact that people are going to hell for this. These men are splitting hell wide open. That's what makes this not funny when it should be hilarious how ridiculous and incoherent their argument points are and just how they have no integrity at all. 
they fail their own gospel. But again, I, I can hear the lies and excuses in my head that they're just going to make to dance around it. And I can hear the what about is as well. Well, what about when he said this? What about when he said that? What about this bit right here? What about that Bible verse? Because that's all it is with these people. It's just, well, what about this? And then you answer that. Well, what about this? And then you answer that. And what about this? I, I can hear it all, folks. Just the excuses and just the, the dances around that they want to get away from the fact that they have borne false witness. It's a simple simple as that and so that's i'm going to leave the gnostic stuff there i think i've done my best to try and prove the point there is other stuff in this video that i could go through like uh, they do the same thing with free grace again they make free grace as if it was a gnostic teaching that marcion believed and that's why uh well the thing is we've already gone through loads of stuff about marcion and we just saw that one saved always saved and even free grace it just didn't come up as a subject matter really it was completely irrelevant so that's all i can say about that and really dealing with one of these idiots is bad enough but dealing with two of them is too much so let's go back to him let's go to the bible now let's uh see how long we can spend going through a lot of the passages that he uses and as well as osas i guess we're going to deal with faith alone as well because they kind of go hand in hand just like work salvation and conditional security go hand in hand as well.